today is about peace. Something that we have come with a, a real mission today, to believe that nobody leaves without the peace of mind that Jesus can give. Amen? Right there, right there, that nobody leaves without the peace of God, peace of mind. We had an extended prayer time on Thursday at our staff team meeting around this power of peace and so many needs represented within our church family. We know that this is called an age of anxiety. We know everybody struggles with worry, doubt, and fear. You're threatened with that in different ways. Uh, this time of year can be more challenging for some. So why not right now, this first Sunday of December, let's believe God that we will leave this gathering with the peace of God, the Prince of Peace leading us, peace of mind, peace that can overwhelm every doubt, fear, and anxiety. Come on, let's praise God that that can be. Amen? I'll deal with it. We got to declare a no shame zone because when you say, hey, at the end of the service, I need peace, uh, what gives you struggle may not cause a struggle for someone else, but it gives you struggle. So we want to pray for God's peace for you. They have their area. When I'm on a plane, if there's turbulence, uh, I don't know why, it just doesn't create fear. I have sat by people and they get really unnerved when there's turbulence. And I can really minister in that moment. Like, I'm telling you, you're going to be fine. Let's just make it like a roller coaster. Come on, hands up. And, you know, I got, I'm just, I'm really at peace in that. Uh, there's a guy sitting right back here. We did a mission trip to Uganda. And when we landed in Entebbe, we had to quickly get over what would be a six-hour drive. We were late, and we took a 30-minute flight, small plane, over this huge body of water. And when we went out to get on it, there was just a huge black thundercloud. The wind was blowing. And I'm like, should we fly? And the pilot goes, oh, the cloud there. We go there. I'm like, okay. That plane, I promise, I'm not exaggerating, because I would never exaggerate. Uh, that plane bounced, turned sideways, and then back. So I'm, I'm okay with that because I, I read that a plane has never crashed because of turbulence and then I Googled it. And Google says that a plane has never crashed because of turbulence. So I don't know, I, I just, I don't get unnerved about that. So if you fly with me and it's turbulent, man, I can really be your pastor in that moment. But if they say this flight's gonna be delayed, and you fly with me, you will go home saying to your family, pastor needs salvation. <laughs> he needs to be born again, born from above, born and lifted out of that. Because I struggle with that. I worry, Kelly's laughing, like you'll probably learn really how to pray for her right now in this part of the sermon. Because I mean, it gets real, like real, real. Last Saturday night we were flying in and our plane landed in Dallas to connect to come here. We were landing when our other plane was boarding. By the time we got off that plane, they, my app said the other plane was through boarding. Because, you know, I've got that app. I can see if the plane I'm going to get on has landed. I can see what gate we're coming into and what gate I have to go to. One time I came off of a plane, and I got to go right out of the gate, turn, and the plane I was connecting with was right next door. They were already on group eight, and I just walked right in with a big smile. I've also landed, and it seemed like I was in the next city to get, yeah, I got a yes over here, like you're going to gate 1032B, <laughs> subcategory C, and it tells you it will take you 15 minutes. I have evaluated, you know, where the moving sidewalks are. Are the moving sidewalks, if I took those and ran, can it faster than the train? And let, let's talk about some airport etiquette. If you get on that moving sidewalk, it's not to stand. I'm just telling you, I backslide every time. Like, you, gotta, you can move over to the right, but you keep moving, people. That's, that's like, that's empowerment. That's the Holy Spirit uh, putting some super in your natural. And you go farther faster. 
So you're, you're getting this, this you know, it, it's real with me. It's real with me. My kids can tell you. It, it, it's a generational curse. You got to blame it on something, right? Like how can the plane be falling out of the sky? I'm like, hey, praise God. This is like a roller coaster. Let it be late. Why, why is that? And so I'm saying to you, you have your area. I have my area. Why would I lose peace of mind in something like that when I don't lose it in other areas because we're all going to be threatened with different things. And the point is, can we bring it today, whatever it is, to Jesus to get the peace of God in that area in our lives? Let's put the scripture to it. Isaiah 9, 6 says, and I love it, for unto us a child is born, a son is given, the government will be on his shoulders and he'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Say it with me. Are you ready? Prince of Peace. Hebrews 6.20 talks about Jesus being the forerunner, the one who went before us, the one who entered and made atonement. The high priest became the sacrifice. After the order of Melchizedek, according to chapter 7, verse 20, Melchizedek is the king of peace. So it is that, that Old Testament picture becoming in its fullness in Jesus, the prince, the king of peace. And then Romans 14, 17 talks about the kingdom of God, where there's joy and there's strength. But look at that other description. There's peace. So God is a God of peace and Jesus is the prince of peace. And we're saved into a kingdom of peace now we've got to let that peace rule in our lives. We, we've got to experience this truth in our lives. Here's John chapter 14, verse 27, three sentences. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled, troubled or afraid. Troubled or afraid. The peace of God confronts and displaces both the trouble and the fear. First sentence, it comes from God. Second sentence, it can't come from the world. It's a gift, peace of mind from Jesus. If you go to the world for the answer of peace over anxiety and you leave Jesus out of that, you are going to the question for the answer. We've got to go to the answer for the answer. We have to turn to Jesus. I'm all about godly wisdom through counselors, uh, even at times going into intense help, do whatever it takes, but it starts with Jesus. It's Bible-based. It's the truth of God because, see, the fear we deal with is supernatural. So there's got to be a supernatural response. There's surpassing fear, so we got to get some surpassing peace, some powerful peace to confront the fear. So let's get at it by going to Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Notice the word guard. It is a military guard to prevent hostile invasion. It's talking about the inner world, the soul, the heart, the mind, and that peace, it has the strength of a military that posts to prevent hostile invasion. So when the fear would like to settle in, the anxiety and the worry. The power of peace is there like a guardian. The presence of God is there. And instead of all of that taking you, it defends you from that invasion and what is around you doesn't get in you. Fear and doubt will always be around us. We got to let God help us to not let it in us. When it gets in us, it, it shuts us down ultimately. It keeps us from being creative, innovative, victorious. It puts oppressive darkness in our heart. And so this peace of God, it's transcendent. 
it's supernatural. That means you can have the kind of circumstances that are fear producing and they don't even change, but yet you have peace when in the natural you shouldn't have peace. That's what I want. I want the peace of God. You can't even explain it. You just know you have it. Somebody talk back to me for a minute where there was a time in your life where it was so challenging and without the help of God, you would have been totally distraught. But you can say, I remember that peace of God coming and settling me down. I couldn't explain it, but I, come on, I know. Can you testify today? You know what it is to have a peace that you can't even explain. I want everybody in this room to have that peace for any worry, any doubt, any anxiety. Uh, as a church, we commit that this age of anxiety that they say these students are now living in, uh, we're not gonna let cultural, culture shape us into that image. We're gonna be shaped into the image of God where there is joy and strength and peace in the Holy Spirit. Now, it is essential to, to keep, let's keep drilling down. Let's take a look in the message paraphrase, same verses from Philippians. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns before you know it. A sense of God's wholeness. Everything coming together for good will come. It will come and settle you down. You didn't have it, but it comes. It settles you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces, displaces worry at the center of your life. Ooh. That's what we're after today. That's what we have come to pray over everyone that God would displace the worry and bring that peace at the center of your life. And this word wholeness, it is a great word. This wholeness, it means peace guides you. It means that peace becomes the culture around you because peace is in you. Mom and dad, let's, let's be people who are experiencing the peace of God so that can be the culture of our home. Let's let our kids experience peace because we are setting that atmosphere because what is in me is going to occupy the space around me. So we're saying we will let peace occupy that space because it has settled in at the center of my life. I will think differently. I'll speak about situations differently. I'll act and react differently when I am walking in the peace of God. I feel something happening in this room. I feel hope. I feel faith that we can receive this. It's not only something that occupies the space around us, it becomes a platform of your witness. So if there's so much anxiety, we can be light in the darkness by being a people that are walking in peace. Instead of being anxious, we're, we're peaceful and that occupies that space and people, they will inquire, like, you know, how are you managing with your family and responsibilities and challenges how are you living in peace? And now you can give witness to Jesus, the Prince of Peace who's giving you that peace, who will give them that gift of peace. And you can say, this what you're going through, the Spirit of God can displace that worry and give you peace at the center of your life. It's a gift. You can have peace of mind. So it is so worth it. How do we receive it? We got to get to the how. This is where we take all the truth and say, that really is what I need. How? Well, it says we've got to take our petitions and let praise shape them into prayers. And as we pray, and we understand what prayer means here, then there is a response of God to give us peace. Let's talk about praise. Isaiah 61 says, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. A spirit of heaviness is when you have been anxious so long that it's worn you down emotionally. And when you get worn down emotionally, you get locked up emotionally, and then there's a 
heaviness about your spirit. It's a spirit of darkness. It is not demon possession, but it is absolutely demonic oppression. Hey, tis the season to be jolly, yes? Then it needs to be the season to confront the devil, to confront darkness, to confront despair, to confront depression. My jolly is going to come when I deal with the devil who's trying to bring an oppressive spirit. So put on praise because it's not automatic. I don't just wake up with what Isaiah 61 is talking about. There's a praise that brings an anointing that breaks a yoke that breaks off of you a spirit of heaviness. There's a lady in the book of Luke She was physically bent over, and the physical condition was coming from oppression. The spiritual was affecting her in the physical. And Jesus ministered to her and called her a daughter of Abraham, meaning you're mine. You don't belong to darkness. You belong to me. And when he delivered her from oppression, it also brought healing physically. Doctors say that still the number one reason we're going to see them has its origin in things that are emotional and that prescriptions are made primarily to help the physical because of something emotional. So I would say we today are going to be intentional because when I'm struggling with worry, doubt, and fear, when I'm on that plane and it's delayed, I don't just say, well, let's just praise the Lord. You know, let's just put on the, now it takes an intentionality to say, I can worry, get frustrated, get angry, like that's going to change anything. Oh, consider the birds. You know that, you know that birds, consider the birds. They don't even worry about what they're going to eat and God, feed. oh, look at the lilies. Who cares about the lilies when you're late? So I know all those verses. I know all that. I know I'm not worried about that bird. I'm worried about this bird, this bird. So the the point is I can't have a different spirit in that moment unless I put on something that I don't have. I got to put it on. Come on church today, if we will put on a garment of praise, no matter what's happened around us, there is an anointing that will break a spirit of heaviness. That worry, doubt, and fear, put a praise right there. Come on, take a praise break that today we can have a spirit of heaviness broken and you walk in a freedom and a joy. Come on, God's going to displace some stuff that doesn't belong in your spirit, in your soul, in your heart, in your life, and you're going to walk in joy. Let's work a minute on context. Listen, Listen to the two verses. Verses four and five. It's not on the screen. Just listen to this. Here's what it says. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice! Exclamation point. Hey, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Be anxious. Don't be anxious about anything. So you don't isolate verses four and five from six and seven, right? It's context. Let me give it to you in the message paraphrase. Celebrate God all day, every day. I mean revel in him. Make it as clear as you can to all you meet that you're on their side. Working with them, not against them. Help them see that the master is about to arrive. How he could show up, here it is, he could show up any minute. Now listen to this. Don't fret or worry. See, it goes right into that. Take those petitions and with praise and turn them into prayers. I want you to get the tone. The the Greek helps us to get tone. It helps us to get the spirit of celebrate, rejoice. Like it is rejoice, not rejoice. It ends up rejoice. Don't be anxious. Do you see what I'm saying? Like we're going to Disney World. Like it's. It ends up, when you talk about anxiety, it's like, don't be anxious. Don't worry about anything, but in everything. The context of not being anxious 
about anything, but in everything flows down from put on the garment, rejoice. Who wrote this, Paul? Where did he write from? Prison. He had to put it on. He, he, he's helping. Come on, let, let the Bible, let Paul mentor you today. Take people who write scripture and just say, hey, be my mentor. If ever someone comes up and says, will you mentor me? That's an awesome thing. Let Paul mentor you. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. What that does, it makes you for people. It gives you, see, that occupies the space around you and, and it becomes an encouragement to those around. Hey, Jesus is near. Jesus could come today. Hey, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, come on. And so praise is changing everything. So we're going to praise him today. We're gonna to praise him with passion and then we will pray. It says with petitions, let your praise turn it into prayer. Prayer there is not informing God of my problems, it's transferring them to God. If I just tell God all that's wrong, I'm not informing him of anything because he's, he knows, but I am to bring that to him. But if I don't bring faith-filled prayer where I transfer it to him, then prayer becomes an exercise in worry. And you're no better off. You may be heavier after you've prayed if you don't transfer it to God. We're sheep. We can't bear burdens. We give those burdens to him. Peter said it like this. Cast your cares. Spirit of heaviness. So wait a minute. Bring it. And prayer is you pray until you pray through. You pray until you've rolled it over. You've prayed until you have transferred it. See, we're about to do prayer this morning. We're gonna do business this morning. We're gonna do kingdom business. We're gonna pray until we've given it to God. And all that gets displaced out of your life. And then you move forward in the wholeness. You revel in him. You delight in him. And it makes all the difference. Prayer is casting those burdens on him. Now, John 14, it says, this gift I give you is peace of mind. I told you about the plane, it's kind of funny, trying to warm it up a bit in the room. It is very real, what I tell you, that, that, that's, that's real, but it's really not at the level of other things. Years ago, we were in our mid-20s, and we were pastoring what was my home church. We'd cast vision through the fall that in the new year, we're going to raise money and finally build the auditorium on this 40 acres of land that the church bought when I was 10 years old. I can remember they brought this picture out on the platform. I was 10. They said, God is leading us. Had no idea that 17 years later, I would be the pastor leading us into that. I was excited. I was full of faith. And we had Christmas at our house, and then we went to Virginia, where Kelly's from, with our family, and had Christmas there. I got a call while I was there. Someone had broken into our church and set it on fire. I always wanted to pastor a church on fire. That is not what I had in mind. Wah, wah, wah. That was kind of corny, wasn't it? Uh, but they set on fire, and we, we didn't lose the auditorium, but we lost it for weeks because there was so much smoke damage. Part of the church was burned up and completely lost, so we had to you know, kind of mark all of that off, shield it off so that reconstruction could come. So at the time when we needed to be communicating the most with our church, as the new year came, we have no offices, no equipment. I mean, everything, the, the light fixtures in my office melted into like icicles. I'm walking through that ash and I did not, I, did, I lost my peace of mind. I lost my momentum, I lost my joy. I was highly frustrated. A year later, we had Christmas, we go home get a phone call, 
that someone had broken into our house. We lived at the end of a street. We, our bedroom was on the back side of the house. Then there was a wooded area. It was a door that went from our bedroom outside. They backed over the yard around, kicked that door in, and stole everything. Every Christmas gift, sheets off the bed. It was back, you know, you have those shelves and you just put stuff, decorating rooms, took all of that and the shelf, everything. Every drawer, every cabinet, and, you know, stuff that's very special and then stuff that you know you can replace. Lost everything, came home to that. And not only, you know, you're dealing with what you lost in the, in the, the possessions, but trying to sleep. I realized I was struggling because those thieves also took my peace of mind because I'm thinking, are they coming back? And I'm laying in that bed and that door's right there. I said, Kelly, would you sleep on this side? <laughs> so uh, that's going on. Took my peace of mind. The least little thing, I'm, I'm waking up in the middle of the night and I'm thinking, you know, you know, are they had an alarm back then? The technology wasn't that great, put a motion detector just outside of that door. And I mean, if if any if the wind blew, wah, and I'm like, oh, they're back, they're back, they're back. And it's just the wind. No peace of mind. A year later, have Christmas, go home, get a call because my associate pastor, whose wife had been battling cancer, they had six beautiful kids. It just overtook her and she passed. So we came home to walk into that house, huddled those kids, cried, prayed. She was special to us. It was a deep impact, took my peace of mind. And I got to a point where I realized I'm living so apprehensively that I'm waiting for the next shoe to drop. And no matter how great something was, I was braced. Something good happened. Well, then get ready. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, fear is expecting the devil to move. Faith-filled praise and prayer is expecting God to move. And if you can bring praise and prayer right now, it's going to lift that weight you're carrying. It's going to break that spirit of darkness. i got to press straight up. It got to the point where Christmas, which I love, love it. It was trying to be a thief of the season because I'm like, oh, God, what's going to happen now? It was 2018 Christmas. I said to Kelly, I said, I'm going to go home early because I cannot breathe. Something's wrong. And that's when the whole process started about my voice and my airway. And, and it's, a, it's been a long journey, but that was different. It, it created concern. And there be, I'll be straight with you. When, when I started thinking like, I'm going to lose my voice and I won't be able to do what I'm called to do. And this is a game changer. I lost my peace of mind. In the goodness of God, he led me to just the right doctor who, who just has helped me beyond. And, and this past year has been my best yet since all of that. But I can tell you it's an ebb and a flow. And, and the physical ebbs and flows, but the peace is sustained, sustained. See, I'm talking about peace where situations around you may get worse before they get better, but yet you're going, I shouldn't even have peace, and I do. Because the peace of God surpasses the fear, the intensity of the worry, the doubt, the diagnosis, the peace of God is stronger. I want the worship team to come today and my heart is to say to you, if anything has threatened your peace of mind or taken it, I had to pastor and preach through all those seasons and I would be preaching faith and I didn't even have it. 
I would be preaching on breakthrough and struggled to believe for it in my own life. That, again, that, that high water moments in the life of the church. I could just get braced because I'm going to get avalanched by something. And so I'm not preaching to you a theory. I am preaching to you truth, but I'm preaching it out of my own experience of where those moments my mind wouldn't shut off, that the peace of God came and settled me down. So I want to go, and in your hearing, I want you to, I want you to receive this. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions, that list, those issues, let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come, will come, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. If you say, I need God to displace the worry and give me peace at the center of my life, just stand right wherever you are. Say, I, I don't want to leave without peace of mind. Yes, yes, yes. Just keep standing. We can lift hands. Just come on. I've been very honest with you. Be honest, be honest. No shame zone. We all have it. We all have it. Just say, just say I need it. I need peace. Need peace. Just keep standing. We didn't know who exactly, but on Thursday, as the Spirit of God settled in on us and our intensity of prayer, we knew that this is what would be happening. Just keep standing. Say, me, count me in, count me in. I need that. I need that. And we felt the confirmation in that prayer time that this gift of called peace of mind, God's gonna give it to you. I wanted to be honest out of my story because I'm not trying to be trite. This is, and he says, rejoice. That can be like, that's trite. No, it's spiritual warfare where we're gonna put some stuff on today. We're gonna put praise on. It's gonna break the heaviness. We're gonna present our requests to God. And then peace is gonna come. Peace is gonna come. Will come settle you down. Someone else, you just keep standing. Keep standing. Some of you, you get triggered. There's that, there's the new word. You get triggered. I'm telling you, when I came into a Christmas season, it would trigger apprehension. I would start bracing. I'm speaking to somebody right now, like me. You, you're in that place. It's like you just wait for the next shoe to drop. You can't enjoy the, the victories for waiting for the next shoe to drop. Who am I talking to? Stand. I know what it's like. Stand. Say, that's me. That's me. Stand. We're going to believe God today. I want this team. Yeah, that's it. Say, that's me. It, it, it may not be easy to be honest, but when you do, something starts even with your response right now. Teenagers, don't you live with all that anxiety pent up in you. With It makes you compare, makes you worry. Uh, it affects you physically. Come on, come on. If today, as a student, you need the peace of God, something's crazy at home, something's crazy in your life, and it's trying to be a thief of your peace of mind, stand and let's believe God to help you today. It's going to help you. That you just stand with me, stand with me, stand with me. I'm going to ask this team to come into this first verse about peace. And everybody's standing. I want you to come forward. And we're going to praise and pray. God's going to give the peace. Come as they sing it today. <laughs>